Hey, Dr. Isaac Jones here, and today I wanna to talk to you about how to transition patients from brick and mortar to virtual practice. I get this question every week. I'm on calls with dozens and dozens of doctors on our group calls, and you know, out of the hundreds of doctors I personally one-on-one -on -one coached and trained, and over the thousands of doctors that have come to our events, I mean, this is one of the top questions that we get. And we wanna ultimately give you the perspective and understanding that this can happen. You can transition virtually successfully. You can do it in a way that adds a ton of value to people and is not going to hemorrhage a bunch of people out of your office and essentially create a situation where you're losing all this money and things of that nature. Uh, but I wanna kind of talk to you about some of the biggest things that I hear from doctors and their hesitancies uh, to going virtual and making the transition from their patients into their virtual practice or what they do as well as they'll think like, okay, I'm gonna have a separate virtual practice and I'll have my per practice over here. I'm gonna start charging more over here. And then, oh, what happens with my patients when they start seeing that I've got this other thing going on and it's more expensive than the, what, they're, what they're doing? And what if they start having friends in the community doing my virtual program and they're paying this over here and, and my virtual program is three times as, as much or whatever. So we're gonna talk about all of that today. There's a lot of really good stuff that we can get into. But you know, the things that I hear is, look, I think my patients might leave. Like if I transition to virtual, then all of these patients that I have will end up leaving. Another thing is, what if it doesn't work? What if the legal ramifications change in my state or whatever? The reality is COVID has completely opened up the landscape for virtual and th this is something that's gonna be here to stay and insurance companies and all of these different states and countries are opening up more and more to be able to practice virtually, which is very exciting. And there's a lot of other things that we can talk about a little bit later, like setting yourself more up as a coach versus as a treating doctor and supporting people mostly with lifestyle change and nutrition and things of that nature or supplement recommendations versus like, hey, I'm going to treat this particular challenge or whatever. But ultimately, there's still a lot of opening, right? With legal, there is so much there that we can talk about. I actually have some education on the website about that. And then we've paid tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars working with the top lawyers in the country to understand the legal landscape of virtual practice and how you can make the transition to virtual. And we've got hundreds of doctors that now are in the process of doing this and have done it in the past and it's just transformative for their lifestyle and their life. So again, what if it doesn't work? And another thing that people say is like, look, I'm scared, I don't know if I can do this. This is what I've been doing all these years and this is really uncomfortable for me. Or some people say, I like connecting with patients. I like hugging, hands on, putting my hand on the back of a patient, adjusting. If you're a medical doctor, connecting. Uh, if you're a naturopath, like communicating and being in that same environment in that room, like I get that. I totally get that. And I, I honestly, when I made that transition to virtual, that was one thing that when I was 100% virtual, that's one thing that I missed, but you can still get it back. And I can talk to you a little bit about how that can happen. And then some people are like, hey, I'm afraid to lose that strong connection that I have with patients and I'm afraid that they're gonna go to somewhere else. So I get all those uh, challenges, but the reality is I've had so many doctors with the same challenges. One doctor that was like, look, I'm gonna practice brick and mortar for the rest of my life. His name is Bart Precourt. And he's just like, I'm a chiropractor, I'm hands-on. I've got recommendations for supplements. I'm cranking, like, look, I don't know if I can do this virtual thing. And so there was just one kind of thing about virtual that was a resistance to him moving forward. And he'd learn about us, he heard about us, he'd go to some educational events. And you know, ultimately what ended up getting created was he took imperfect action. He took imperfect action. He's like, look, look I'm gonna start this on the side, maybe a couple hours a week. And over time, what ended up happening was in the first six months, I think he did uh, $600,000 and he has a, a seven figure uh, uh, virtual practice now working just two days a week in virtual practice. So very similar story to what, what happened for me, but he made the transition. You know, a lot of the, the clients that he was working with, he was able to move into virtual. And one of the things that he wanted to do was just keep one day in, off, day in the office. 
And that was great for him. Other people, like even the last month, we've had like four or five doctors that have completely gone into the virtual realm. Like they're like completely cutting off from seeing people live and in person and they're 100% virtual. And this is like post COVID, it's awesome. So you can do this. You can totally do this. You can uh, go virtual, but again, it's something that, that you should know. Like there are a lot of people that have done it and there's people that have done it over time. Like Peter Kahn, he transitioned his whole entire team virtual over the course of a year. So he took his time, he did it over the course of a year. And in that year, he built a $2 million virtual practice with his team as he, he made the transition from brick and mortar to virtual. We had another uh, woman, Elena Valenueva, who made the transition to virtual in one month. And, and so she literally sent out a letter um, to her patient. I worked on the letter with her. She essentially sent it out. I remember she was in, the, she was in between a rock and, and a hard place, right? But what, one of the things that she was thinking is she had this really great property to expand her brick and mortar, or she could literally go into the virtual space. And, and move away from brick and mortar altogether. She was super nervous. She got in the hot seat at one of our retreats and events. And she's like, this is where I'm at. And I can remember, I was like, go all in. Like, you've got this, you can do this. And 90% and of people keep a hybrid of virtual and brick and mortar, which is great. But a, a lot of people now are making the decision to do what a lot of my top clients have done, which is to go 100% virtual. And so she ended up putting together this letter, which we discuss and educate about inside of our virtual practice accelerator program and our freedom coaching program, which teaches doctors how to transition into the virtual practice. But this is what she did. And she literally transitioned 90% of all of the people she was working with successfully into virtual, there was a 10% drop off, but she said that those patients were trouble patients and those are patients that she literally, some of them she didn't even invite into the virtual practice. So it was like an upgrade. It was like she was in brick and mortar and she upgraded into virtual, brought a lot of the her, her favorite clients along with her. The majority of people transitioned, the people that she didn't necessarily like working with didn't. And then some of the people you know, there's just a, a few that dropped off, which is completely fine. Like this is ultimately, you know, where she ended up going. And what was so cool about her story, she made that transition so quickly. And I can remember getting on a few calls with her where she's in tears because she was just frustrated. She's like, look, it's hard. There's nobody signing up. I don't know if I can do this. And literally it's, it's like the same transition almost every doctor makes. There's like a resistance. They don't think they can do it. There's some tears. And then boom, like one of the wins yesterday in our call was this girl that literally was in tears last month because she was concerned about her transition and all the things, new things that she's learning. And then because she implemented what we teach, she had her largest month ever at $150,000 that last month. And she's just like, okay, now I get it. This is awesome. And she was in such a better place. The same happened with Elena. So I wanted to share those stories so that you could get inspired about what's possible and how people make different transitional kind of ways of going virtual. And, and so one thing I'll say is that people that have gone all in virtual are in a place where they're like, hey, look, I have to figure this out. And typically they are like some of the most successful clients that we have, not to say that the people that do it over like a course of two or three years aren't successful, they are, but clearly if you go all in, you're gonna get uh, faster results, which is fine. And everyone's in different places. What questions are we asking that we shouldn't be asking? And what questions can we replace those with so that we can transition better virtually? One of the, the students essentially asked the question, what if they quit on me, right? And the question I want you to ask is, how do I make the experience and the results virtually better than before? And that's the thing, is that we have done this over and over and over uh, 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 the years. And the question I asked myself in 2008 when I was building my virtual practice and pioneering this space was, you know, how can I make this better than brick and mortar? How can I get better results with patients so that they refer? And that became my number one marketing strategy is results and referrals. And so 
that, that can get created for you too. Don't be worried about all these people quitting, et cetera. Be asking the right question of how can I make this even better? How can I create a better experience with better results than they, they were getting before? Obviously, I've hired agencies, exper like customer experience agencies to the tune of 50K to fly in for, for one day to like revamp my whole virtual practice. And so that's again, inside the virtual practice accelerator program and inside of our trainings and education, but is something that, that is a, again, a transition away from a bad question to ask to a good question to ask. So another question is, should I be marketing to my existing patients in my brick and mortar with my virtual practice? Um, and there's all, all this kind of tension around that. And then the question you should be asking is, how can I introduce the upgraded version of my practice to my patients, right? because virtual is going to be a part of your brick and mortar. The feedback that we get from people that are in the virtual practice accelerator is Isaac, it's transformed my brick and mortar practice. I, I don't even know what to do with the, all the new patients that are coming into my brick and mortar, let alone all the virtual that, you know, I'm starting to see. So the education and the systems I believe are the most powerful for brick and mortar or for virtual that exists in America and really around the world. And, and it just comes from me being a Picasso in this space and essentially going so deep for so many years and having thousands of conversations with hundreds and hundreds of, uh, really thousands of doctors now over the years and have built a, have built a, a really successful seven figure, multi seven figure virtual practice myself. The question, again, that you want to transition, should I be marketing to my existing patients in my brick and mortar to my virtual practice, is how can I introduce the upgraded version of my practice to my patients? You are going to create an upgraded version. And so some of the people will say, hey, look, like, you know, you're charging more in your virtual practice, in your programs, the way that you structured things are different, and it's an opportunity to educate on all the upgrades that you've made and how it's even better and it's gonna get better results, et cetera. And it will help the patient understand the upgraded version and, and to the point where they're like, how do I sign up for that? Or that sounds really great. I'd love to refer some people into that. And so it's also a, a, a good way to use the opportunity to communicate to the existing patient base something that you're doing, getting them behind what you're doing. Hey, I'd love more referrals uh, into this practice. This is the problem that I'm, uh, that I'm solving. This is the process that we're bringing people through, the programs we've created. And, and so look at this as a great opportunity to enroll existing health participants and clients. So that's my word for patient, so that they essentially, uh, a health participant, so that they essentially will want to engage with you and work with you and and want to team up and, and actually refer people into what you're doing. And we've done this successfully so many times. But again, the quality of the life that you ask that you live yourself is based out of the quality of questions you ask, right? That the quality of answers that you get are based off the quality of, of questions that you ask. And so you know, should I be marketing my existing patients? What if they leave? How can I make sure that they don't quit on me, et cetera? How do I make the experience and results better than before virtually? How can I introduce the upgraded version of my practice? And again, one of the things is, hey, like, look, like what if they're paying fee for service and I'm changing stuff to more cash-based programs? Like, what do I do in that scenario? And so what I would say is that this is again, a great opportunity to educate. You can talk about how much more you're doing how you looked into the research and, and it's shown that people that, that invest into a process get way better results and the results are long-term sustainable and you're not in the business of just creating short-term attainable results anymore. You're in the business of creating long-term sustainable results. I'll say it again, you're not in the business of creating short-term attainable results that you know come and go and you're in the, on the yo-yo. You're, you're literally in the business of shifting their psychology, their habits, their lifestyle so that they ultimately become upgraded human beings so that they create long-term sustainable transformations in their life for life, okay? So that's the shift. I hope that you get that. So here's some tips to ensure a smooth transition. The thing that, that you really want to do is address patient concerns up front, ultimately before they do. Introduce it to them and launch it to them. Like we're talking about create like a party, like a launch party 
where you're launching practice 2.0, the upgraded version of where you were before. Educate them on why it's better. Educate them on why you need them on mission and on purpose to help refer more people into your practice, etc. Number two, surround them with social proof of other happy clients. Maybe you've had a couple people beta test your program. Maybe your mom or your cousin or your wife or somebody you know has beta tested your program and they give you a great re- recommendation around the transformation that they had and it's something that you can highlight and show them like, look, this is what is possible. This is the future of healthcare. Virtual is the future of healthcare. These customized health programs, these transformations that we're making, this is the future of healthcare. And this is something that I want you to get on board with. Number three is create a plan to transition your practice, including marketing, technology, workflow, uh, training, scripting. This is all the elements that we get into in the virtual practice accelerator program. Again, we give you the legal kind of frameworking. We give you the scripting. We give you the presentations to show your patients. We give you the educational marketing funnels that you want to put together. We give you the webinar and all of the webinar templates that you need in order to be as successful as possible. So this is something that ultimately I think we should really lean into and drive in a as successful way as we possibly can. So You know, again, the VPA program, if you're interested, I'd love for you to be a part of our culture, a part of our tribe here at HEA. It's really for the elite people in the space that are looking to go virtual. And if you are committed to uh, becoming uh, virtual and you look at yourself as somebody that is like, look, I want to do this, then we'd love to have you a part of our exclusive community. So go ahead and click the link below to, to learn more about the VPA program. So... Number four is create a realistic timeline for transition. Yes, we've had people do it in in a month, but some people have done it in three months. Some people want to wait for three years for crying out loud. So that's fine. Create a transition timeline that works for you specific to your goals. Keep in mind that you're not alone. There's help available from professionals who have transitioned their practices before and that you are not alone. You have got people to support you, to engage with you, to uplift you. That's why I'm here. Stay plugged into our blog if you don't wanna become part of our community, but this is something that other doctors have done. They figured it out. I've ultimately helped them figure it out, and we are the number one educator in the space on transitioning into virtual practice. So the conclusion is, transitioning to virtual used to be more far-fetched, but still possible. But now it's more of the norm for people that are interested in going virtual, which is still a very small percentage of doctors. Most doctors after COVID, they went back to trying to figure out their brick and mortar and and just a small percentage of them, you know, tried to continue to dabble in virtual. And then some have successful virtual practices, seven figure, six multi six figure virtual practices, but they've set it all up wrong and they're slaves to their virtual practice. Those are a lot of the people that we have working with us right now. So ultimately, it is more acceptable and more people are making the transition. It's the perfect environment to do this. Financially, it's the perfect environment. Legally, it's the best environment to do it from a structural perspective and the fact that there's somebody like myself that has been there, done that, and has put together educational systems to make it step-by-step cookie cutter for you to go and be successful in this space, huge, right? Whether you're a medical doctor, a DC, an ND, you know, in this space, you can totally do it. This is something that is ideal. Oh, another big objection I get is, well, I need more functional medicine education. What I'd say is if you just learn the business systems, the reality is most patients, 97, 95%, of patients just need the basics. So if you put together the things that you learn inside of our program from a clin- the clinical perspective, plus we have clinical education and training inside of our culture and community, you can learn more about that. It's part of the what, what we call the Freedom Coaching Program. Uh, but inside of just even the Virtual Practice Accelerator Program, the VPA program, there's still a lot of really great structure and framework around how to set up your program and as long as you take action, you learn, and you don't necessarily need all these advanced certifications and trainings. Uh, we've got amazing connections. We have an amazing network of people. There's a lot of doctors that are th- there to support you and help you, but don't let that hold you back from going virtual. And then lastly, focus on the positive. A lot of people, they don't focus on the positive. 
They are focused on all of the wrong questions to ask themselves. And that's why they never go virtual. So hopefully you, if you've listened to this point in the conversation that we've had today, then you know that this is possible. You can do this. There's never been a better community. There's never been a better system for you to actually make this happen. And so keep positive. Know that we've got your back. We are a community, whether you're a part of our community or not, stay plugged into our emails. We're going to be there to help and support you. Uh, moving forward. Thank you for listening. If you found this valuable, please share this with a friend, a colleague that might be struggling in this area. And we look forward to adding more value and creating more amazing content for you in the virtual practice, online growth and business space in the future. I'm Dr. Isaac Jones. Thanks so much for watching.